Hello and welcome to my channel guys. Today we are going to dive into a very uh, important and interesting topic which is Manjuma. Right? So let's get started. Now here's how uh, Manjuma looks. Okay, it's usually found in infants and children and mostly in head and neck areas. Okay, so now it's a true neoplasm of endothelial cells now we know endothelial cells are found in uh, vessels right so the innermost layer of vessels uh, is made up of endothelial cells and it's a new uh, it's a true neoplasm of endothelial cells now hemangioma is of non epithelial origin okay so it's not a uh, or it hasn't originated from epithelium it is non epithelial in origin and specifically from the connective tissue right now the lesions are not going to be present at birth as compared to the vascular malformation which usually is present at birth right so it is not going to be present at birth but it is going to manifest within the first and second months of life right so it's most going to be affect uh infants and children so these are the age groups which are uh, which are going to be the most affected and uh, it is not vascular malformation which you know many people confuse it with right now uh, the etiology is mostly idiopathic okay so we don't know the origin uh, we don't know the reason okay that why it occurs and the clinical features now it is the most common benign soft tissue tumor of infants and children right so it's the most common tumor and it is uh, of this age group and it is benign not malignant right and it is a soft tissue tumor not hard tissue remember this now the sex most affected is females okay in a 3 to 1 ratio and it occurs more in whites okay now uh, the pathogenesis is like that ki it undergoes rapid proliferation for the first 6 to 10 months okay so it appeared within the first or second month of life and then it undergoes rapid proliferation okay during the early childhood and what happens is you are going to see a an elevated bright red colored rubbery in consistency okay so if you palpate it you're going to notice a rubbery consistency and a bright red color and an elevated lesion okay and that's why you call it a strawberry hemangioma largely because of because of the appearance right now uh, then what happens is this tumor slows growth and it shrinks so very interestingly it shrinks on its own right and it resolves completely by 9 years of age so most of the mangiomas resolve on their own okay uh, but scars may be present now the common sites as i said before ki head and neck is most common site okay 60% lesions are going to be found on head and neck and it is not that common orally right also it can be single or multiple the so single lesions can occur as well as multiple lesions but mostly single lesions occur and in area it occurs in areas like eyes neck larynx if so if these areas are affected obviously it would be a cause of uh, morbidity right because these are the significant areas of our body and it would lead to obstruction maybe and uh, blindness and all those uh, very drastic conditions hai na right so those morbid conditions now also hemangiomas can occur intraosseously right uh, like inside of the bone lesion will be inside of the bone and mostly uh, out of maxilla and mandible mandible is most commonly affected in intraosseous type and uh, radiographically what you are going to notice is a multilocular radio lucency right but obviously this Uh, radio lucency will be of either soap bubble or honeycomb type because uh, if the you know if the multi locules of the if the locules are of larger size then they are going to appear like a soap bubble 
and if they are of smaller size then you are going to see a honeycomb appearance also it can show some cortical expansion right which is going to give the appearance of sunburst pattern okay so this pattern is um, seen in many uh, bone diseases also right uh, so in hemangiomas also this pattern can be noticed radiographically now there is also very famous syndrome as of uh, hemangioma is considered associated with hemangioma so this is called as phases okay phase and the s now what it states for is that p stands for uh, posterior fossa brain anomaly okay so in brain posterior fossa is affected okay and the second one is hemangioma which is usually the cervical segmental arterial type okay so this is a particular kind a particularly uh, type of hemangioma which is you know associated with this hemangioma syndrome which is what cervical segmental arterial anomaly now the third one that is uh, sorry 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 so phase which is h h for hemangioma and a for arterial anomaly okay so this is the third one actually arterial anomaly i have uh, okay so okay so now if you see that the third one a stands for the arterial anomaly and the fourth one is cardiac defects and the coarctation of aorta the fifth one is eye anomalies and the sixth one is sternal cleft or the supra umbilical raphe so these are the six anomalies associated with the hemangioma okay so this these whole are grouped under hemangioma syndrome now hemangioma can be classified under as like the first one capillary cavernous and mixed hemangiomas okay uh, the oral manifestations of hemangioma uh, now hemangioma looks like a red or blue colored flat or raised lesion okay which is readily compressible and it fills slowly when released right so these are red colored or blue colored and these can either be flat or raised and it is readily compressible and it it fills slowly when it is released the most most common sites orally affected are lips your tongue then your palate your buccal mucosa and if these lesions are traumatized it is going to lead to ulceration and the secondary infection right so so that's the most common areas affected orally intraorally which is lips uh, tongue palate and buccal mucosa and if it is, if these are traumatized it's going to lead to ulceration and secondary infection now the histologic diagram of capillary hemangioma is what you're going to see or notice is that epithelium is there epidermis which is and we are going to see multiple lobules right now these lobules these have uh, capillaries right which are thin walled a single layer of endothelium you can notice right of these capillaries and these many lobules are separated by a thin very thin thin septas also okay and then these capillaries are lined by single layer of endothelium and you're going to see some blood also rbcs also inside of these capillaries so that is how our capillary hemangioma looks histographically and what do you look uh, what do you notice in cavernous hemangioma is that that there would be large spaces containing blood okay so here there were like small spaces uh, filled with blood in cavernous you are going to see very large spaces and now these spaces are also lined by a single layer of endothelium okay and this histologic diagram is taken from hepatic uh, parenchyma right so it's the histologic diagram from a liver so you're going to notice the hepatic parenchyma so that is how a cavernous hemangioma looks like in a histologic diagram or in the histographic slides now the treatment is largely 
that most of the tumors obviously they undergo spontaneous remission now if some of the tumors does not remi uh, remi remise on their own so what we can do as of treatment is considered is that we can do surgery we can do uh, we can give radiation therapy sclerosing agents carbon dioxide snow cryotherapy compression and the intralesional steroids so these are some uh, therapies which can be given for hemangioma so that's all for this topic and i hope that you got some value from this video and if you got this well uh, if you got something from this then do like share and subscribe and let's meet in another video thank you